Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Isn't it good to be in church? Awesome. Well, hey, uh, I was just here a couple of months ago, and we were talking about altars. How many of you remember that? And uh, just had a great time together. And, uh, you know, with Pastor Markell up here is great. And then uh, Pastor Lance, and you have a new associate. And I was told by Pastor Lance that if I want to come back, I have to shave my head, too. <laughs> that uh, he said, hey, look, if you want it, that's just the deal here. So... Anyway, my anointing may be a little less than these fellas, but just stick with me today, all right? So, hey, um, I want to just take a minute because my heart's tender this morning as we were worshiping, and, and I just want to take a moment. If you could close your eyes right now, and there was something specific that the Lord uh, put on my heart, and there is two, maybe three people, or maybe more that you, did, you wouldn't know how to put it into words, but when you think about it, you feel a little unlovable right now. That maybe you've done something, maybe you've said something. Maybe you've had a pattern for a long time. And you just sort of feel like God turns his head when you come around. Or maybe God shakes his head at you in disapproval. And you want so bad to have an open heart with God, but you're guarded because you may feel shame or guilt or you're angry with yourself. The Lord wants you to know today that he loves you. And I want to say something, but before I do, would you raise your hand if you're like, I can identify with that, Pastor. Dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any others? I would say this today that the Lord put in my heart to say, with the turmoil and the things that you have going on, that he would say this, this is your sign. Pastor Dave speaking, me speaking through Pastor Dave, this is your sign that I have an unconditional love for you. And watch this. So don't ever question my love in the worst moments of your life. Always be reassured of the sign that I gave you. Here, in July 23rd, 2023, I reminded you. So, Heavenly Father, for all of us, Lord, in those unlovable moments that we, we all have experienced, and even today, Father, I just pray right now that we would be convinced and we would be reminded on your word. Lord, your, David said this, my hope is in your word. It's not in my feelings. It's not in what I think about. My hope is in your word. And so, Father, today, may we be reminded of that. Lord, even as I speak from the scriptures and as we're going through Romans, Lord, may we be reminded of this ridiculous love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, all right. It looks like I'm going handheld today, so let me kick off the, the earpiece but I'm so happy to be here with you. Uh, many of you know that recently, within this last year, I wrote a book called No More Dad Issues. And so I've shared about that before when I've been here. We brought a few more to, if you wanted to grab some on Amazon, they're more expensive, but you can get them cheaper here. And then the other thing is, recently, uh, I resigned uh, my church. Last month was my last month as a senior pastor of Streamline Church, which my wife and I started 15 years ago. And with that, God has just began to kind of, uh, you, you know, provide new vision and a calling in the area that the book is kind of the, the platform for me to begin to minister and help us turn a generation. How many of you know we need a, a generation healed of dad issues? And we need a generation to help, help some dads become heroes. And so that's where we're, where we're headed. Uh, but one thing I didn't expect was uh, recently, I just doing some designs and being, you know, artistic, feeling creative. I started making some designs and then I put them on shirts. And then I've had people say, you know what, you need to sell those shirts. People will buy those shirts. Um, so we're going to find out. Anyway... <laughs> So, so anyway, we brought some shirts. I have designed them and someone printed them off. But if you would like to check those out on your way out today, hopefully one of you would say, yes, there's value in this shirt. Okay. 
<laughs> anyway, so we're so glad to be here. My wife, Lori, is with me again, and uh, I just feel like we're becoming part of this congregation in this church, and today I get to share in this series, Romans. Everybody say Romans. Romans, and we're going through this, and, and you know, when you think back to the Roman Empire, in Rome in this day, and who Paul was speaking to, it was a very barbaric culture. It was barbaric. Their entertainment was literally going into the Colosseum, throwing Christians into the ring, and setting tigers loose, and to chew up the Christians, and just, I, I, I don't know how you celebrate that or hand clap for that, but that was how barbaric they were. People followed the laws of the land, of the emperor, of, of all of Rome, they didn't, they didn't follow the rules because it was just the right thing, they do, right thing to do. They followed the rules because it was barbaric and you could lose your life if you didn't do what was right and what the emperor wanted, what Caesar wanted. It was a culture that was barbaric and I'm going, where, I'm going somewhere today. Is that I believe that we live in a barbaric culture today. We maybe not physically, but socially, relationally, that we live in a culture that cancels, that puts down. We, we talk about uh, woke, and I'm going to get to that in a second, but we hear about this woke culture in social media, canceling people, shutting people down. It is barbaric. You don't, you don't matter. You are nothing if you don't say something I like, and if you say something you don't like, that you, the, the whole culture and, and state and nation will have nothing to do with you. That's barbaric. It's barbaric, and the word uh, woke, originally, when it was started and being used, the word woke was about being conscious and aware in society. To be socially conscious and aware in society of injustice, pain and offense of other people, and being careful of the other person, it was a good thing. But now we've come to a place to where woke is getting, is getting worse and it's taking a bad slant. See, what we've done is, is that now I'm owning woke and you better be woke when it comes to me. You have to be sensitive to what I say. You have to honor what I say. Check this out. And if you don't honor or respect what I say, or you say something that could possibly be a little bit off, we are done. I will have nothing to do with you. I cannot be associated with you. We point the finger. This is a society that's becoming barbaric. And, and what I want to talk about today is this woke love. And, and it's kind of an oxymoron. But this woke love that says, I will love you if. I will love you until we're done with love. And, and I, I know it's nobody in the church or Christians at all. But, but we have began, if we're not careful, to adopt something that is worldly, it's ungodly, it's not right, it's not Christ-like. And so now if we're not careful, we get into this woke love. And today I want to talk about canceling woke love. Not canceling anybody out. But canceling this woke type of love that says you are obligated to do what I say. You're obligated to agree with me. You're obligated to do, go along with what I want. It's this woke kind of love. And I look at our culture, and it reminds me of this song. This song came to mind. How many of you, you, you like some 80s music? All right. Uh, all right, so I don't know how many are old or whatever. I, I hate to think of myself as old, but anyway. But there was this song by Foreigner. How many of you remember Foreigner? And it was this. I want to know what? I want to know what love is. I want to 
know what love is. I believe we have in a culture today the heart that says, I want to know what love is. I don't know what it is. All I know is that when it's oh, when things are done wrong and I have good feelings for you, then things end. And so we don't know how to protect ourselves. We want to know what love is. We have a culture that I believe wants to know what love is, but all they know is how to love themselves and to be paying attention to our offense, and that's all we can think of what love is. And in the church, we know where love is. We know where to find love. We know about love. The question for us is Am I one who's able to really purely give the love that is required of me and that's been given to me? Now, I've had to ask myself over this past week and be really honest before the Lord and say, how many times have I maybe had a little bit of this woke love myself? That I've loved the easy people. I love the people that have agreed with me. I love the people who haven't hurt me. But then when I get to the others, I don't know how maybe, I don't know know how maybe woke I am. And I want you to see this today. I I, I want us to be, can we be real today? And maybe how woke you, you, you might be that we can evaluate ourselves. How do you love somebody? who has opposing views on abortion. How do you love somebody who sits on the other side of the aisle? How do you love a serial killer? How do you love somebody who's hurt you in the church? How do you love someone who's created rumors about you and people believing them? How do you love someone who has maybe abused you? How do you love someone who is taking credit for things that you have done and you feel robbed? How do we love? How do we find that kind of love? Because right away, if we can all be honest... There is a separation that happens when that's there that I'm not going to have anything to do with you. I'm going to stay away from you because I don't, I can't love someone who is like, I, I know that's no one here. I'm just talking about for, you know, for Pastor Lance and we're, we're just going to help him out today for all the ball people in the house. But, but Jesus, amen. I just said you got woke kind of love. Anyway, check this out. But Jesus said this in, in Matthew 5. When he was talking about love, he says this. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. He's saying, have this this perfect love. Perfect, and it comes from a word that actually means this. Mature and fully developed. Have a love that is mature and is fully developed because you have a heavenly father who has a matured love, who has a fully developed love, and you have access to that, now be like him. We have to ask ourselves, how mature is my love? How developed is my love? And if I'm struggling with woke, then today is the day I'm going to cancel it out. Because if we're not careful, and when we're talking about woke love, what, is, what it is, is now we are making people the enemy. Now people are the enemy because of what you've done, who you are. You're the opposition. You're, we have all of these things. And, and I want us to look real quick, a snapshot, into these, um, in the Romans 12 and 13 I'm going to hit. But one scripture is verse 20 of chapter 12. It says this. I know we got it, baby. It's coming. Okay, if your enemy, everybody say enemy. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. We'll talk about that later, but I want you to see something. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. Who determines who has the label of enemy in your life? 
Who is the one that decides they're the enemy? Who identifies the people as the enemy? Because here's the deal where Paul is going to get at is nobody should ever be the enemy. They should always be the neighbor. That I can never allow myself to identify you or label you as the enemy. You are always my neighbor and you will always be my neighbor. And we struggle with that. Can, can we be honest? There's a time where you ain't my neighbor. Better get out of my neighborhood, right? Um, so what do we do? How do we, how do we begin to get past and cancel this woke type of love. There's, a, there's two words that we're going to read today later on in the, in the message. And I believe this is where we begin to make the leap from being having this woke type of love to canceling it. Is sincere love. Everybody say sincere. It's a sincere love, which means this. I love you, and I don't want anything from you. I love you, and I haven't set up expectations for you to meet so that I can continue to. I love you, and you are not obligated to love me back because I just simply love you. And what that does is that cleanses out all of the, the woke. And what it does is just says, I'm going to be a purely someone who loves people. And, and what I wanted to kind of help us wrap our mind around today when we're talking about this love is to, to define it in a simple way that would help us say, that's what I've got to do. That's my mission from now on. If I'm going to love people and I'm not going to get caught up in this woke love and I'm going to cancel it, there's this one mindset that is important for us to have. Is that it's going to be about this. The best in me serving the best in you. That the way I'm going to show and prove my love is I'm going to take the best I have in me to serve, to be serving the best in you. And I'm going to tell you something, I ain't that good. I ain't that good, and I believe this. The only good thing in me is Christ. I, if it's left up to me, it's going to be a hot mess. People are going to get hurt, and, and I'm going to cause division. But you know what? If it's Christ, that is the best thing I have to offer you. And it doesn't matter how difficult somebody else is or challenging or frustrating they may be, is that when I look to the other person, I'm looking for the best in them. And I'm choosing instead of looking at what you've done wrong and, and all this other garbage, I'm taking the best in me, which is Christ, and I'm going to look for what's the best in you so that I can love you into the kingdom. Into the kingdom. And so today I wanted to jump into chapters 12 and 13 as we're learning how to use the best in us to serve the best in other people. And I'm going to take a different approach to this, to these selection of scriptures today. I want to start in 13 and then I want to work our way back. And the reason, there's a reason for it as we go through this today, but I want to start in chapter 13. I hope you're taking notes today because I believe the Holy Spirit's going to speak to you way more direct and clear and personal than I ever could. But I want to look at chapter 13. In just a second, but it helps us to understand this. If we, if we are going to love in a way that cancels out woke love in us, we have to make some decisions of things we're going to release and we're no longer going to hold on to, but we're going to give away. See, if we're going to give the best of ourselves and put it into the best of others, we don't have the rights or own the rights to love another. We don't own the rights to, to our love for another. We don't own them. 
We have decided, if we've decided to follow Christ and I've decided to have this love for God, I have decided love is the only law that I honor. And here it, we go into this scripture here in chapter 13. I want us to read this together. It says this. Let no debt remain outstanding except continuing the debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law, the command, the standard that God has set in place. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever the command there may, there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. It's the fulfillment of the standard. I think it's interesting how it refers to murdering and adultery and stealing and coveting and saying that's breaking the law and it's taking it to that extreme. But then loving your neighbor is also part of the law. That it's not like, it's, it's not like this is something you do the best you can and there's a time where you can just kind of relax a little bit. That if murder, you and I have decided we're never going to murder anybody. Maybe our kids. No, but, but we're never, we're never going to murder anybody. We're never going to kill anybody. We're never going to do that. That's just not, there's a good chance that mostly nobody, <laughs> anybody in here will do this because we have made it a law and we will not break that law. And if we are going to love others as ourselves, we're saying this, this is the law and I won't break it. I don't have rights to take it back and say, I'm going to do it. Now you can have it back. I don't have because it is the fulfillment of the law in my life. And I'm not going to allow myself to say, I determine when I love and when I don't. Come on, am I talking to somebody? I don't determine that. I don't own the rights to it. But it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do we personalize that? I would say something, it's interesting to put it this way, is love your neighbor as you crave to be loved. Love your neighbor in the way that I need that type of love. You don't put this pressure on someone else, you love me this way, then I love you. That's not fulfillment of the law. But are you able to love somebody the way that you crave just because you're my neighbor, you are not my enemy? That I'm going to say consistent and faithful to the Lord, the love that he gave me is going to be consistent and fruitful in my life? I think of Jesus. Jesus had no enemies. Judas betrayed him. He was still his neighbor. Peter denied him. He was still his neighbor. The high priest plotted to kill him. They never stopped being his neighbor. Pilate sentenced him. He was still his neighbor. The people shouted out, crucify him, and they were still his neighbor. The man who whipped him, he was his neighbor. The men who put the crown of thorns on his head, on his scalp, and caused it to bleed, they were his neighbor. The man who nailed his feet into the cross, the one who put the spear in his side, the one who nailed his hands to the, to the cross, and the one who lifted it up, they were still his neighbor. And the way I know is this, because when he got up there, he had looked down, then he looked up and said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They're my neighbor's. He didn't say they're the enemy, God. Would you just fry them all? That's woke. He loved his neighbor enemy no matter what they did because we were all enemies of the cross. But he loved us. It was Christ giving the best in him, serving the best that he found in us. We don't own the rights 
And then as we're seeing, what, what's interesting is we, we're looking in chapter 13, and if we, we start rewinding and we go back, Paul has something sandwiched in between two love sections of Scripture. The, sec- the Scripture that we're going to read in chapter 12, it's all about love. We just heard about love your neighbor, and then he just, I don't know how he does this, But he does when he starts talking about how we have to obey and submit to authority. Paul, have some grammatical practice and smarts. You stay on course. You don't go and you deviate. But for some reason, in between this love, he talks about submitting to authority. Submitting and obeying leaders. Say, this is so important for us because this is where we really struggle. Especially in our culture today, the newer generation and the older generation. Is we love when the conditions are out of control. We love when the conditions are out of control because if they're out of our control, amen, somebody say this, they're out of control. How many control freaks do we have in the house, right? I'm a recovering control freak, okay? But we don't just love when things are in control. Now he's talking about you're going into this and you're maintaining a spirit of love when you don't have it in in control and things are not going well for you and you think differently. You You point things out and you may be right and you have all these different decisions and then you get woke and you say, well, I don't have to. This is, what, this is what the Apostle Paul says. Remember, we're in Rome where they're wicked and evil and barbaric and killing Christians. And he goes and he says this. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities. Remember, he's in Rome. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. For some reason, he allows things to be established and arranged in his way. And we don't know. But what does this have to do with love? Now, there is a certain being, somebody in our home, that my wife, Lori, is deeply in love with. I believe, I've told her this, I believe that you were, you love this thing more than you love me. We've been on trips together and she wants to go and show pictures and she doesn't show pictures of the kids to people or myself. She shows pictures of, of this one right here, Macy, our dog. That's what she shows. I'm serious. Like uh, Macy follows her around. Lori's always trimming her hair. Lori's feeding her, getting upset. Don't give her this. This is what she needs. This is what she wants. And she's just always coming home. And Lori talks to her in ways that it's like, what are you doing? It sounds like you're speaking in tongues or something. And and the words that you say and and they're talking and somehow you, you can see Macy is cute. We love our little Macy. She's beautiful. She's a beautiful, lovely creation of God. See, in Genesis, it says this, that God saw all that he created and said that it was was good. And the word established, when we're talking about all authority, the word established, it means to arrange in the greek word here the root word to arrange or to draw together that the creation of this thing was god designed it god situated it god god put it together and he knew exactly how it would work and the day that it was going to work and how he's going to use it for his plan in the future and he saw this is good see we love creations when they're pretty we just don't love his creations when they're hard And so we, we look at our dog, Macy, and man, we don't like it when she poops, when she pees, when she just makes a mess with things. She's got her toys all over the place. We still love her. 
and where we, we come to a place of where I'm going to be serving the best in you out of the best of me and the best in me, is now I'm making a decision because you are God's creation. It doesn't matter what your behavior is. It doesn't matter how you've wronged me. It doesn't matter how wicked and evil you are or the practices that you have. Even when it's out of control, the only control and the condition that I love in is all the time. It's all the time. And I maintain this sort of love because we love. If we're going to love, if we're going to have this kind of love that's not woke, and we're going to cancel it out, then we make a decision that I'm going to love even when the conditions are out of control or out of my control. And so we see how, how the Apostle Paul, he's, we're rewinding, we're going back, and now we've talked about when the loving, when the conditions are out of our control, and then going back even further to where now I don't own the rights of my love to love other people. And now it's like he's taken us to a place of, now this is how you're going to put it to practice. Here are the ways that you identify if you are serving and how you are serving other people in love. These are the ways that you will know they will be confirmation that you are not canceling out anybody. You don't have this woke type of love, but you're canceling this woke type of love in you. It's simply this. We love actively, not passively. Sincere love, here it is. Sincere love must be active, not passive. This sincere type of love to where there are no, there are no expectations on you. It doesn't matter. We've got a serial killer back on the East Coast. How, how, does, how does anybody muster up the love for him in this time like this? How, how do we do this? And he's on suicide watch. And, and they've got, how, how do you muster up this kind of love? It's out of sincerity that you don't have to live right for me to love you, that you don't have to agree with me for me to love you, but I'm just going to be sincere and love you because you're God's creation. And what happens is so many times in church, because I've done this, we're agreeing with the pastor. You've been agreeing with me the whole time. I, I think everything you've been agreeing with so far We know who's going to be at the altar in just a few minutes, <laughs> or should be. Anyway, see this. I want you to see this. Is that we, we believe what God's Word says. We believe what the preacher says. We believe what our, what our YouVersion app says when we read it in the morning with the Scripture. We believe it, but where we begin to miss it is, is we've, we go from being active about it to passive about it. I believe it, and then we walk out and just believe it's going to happen. Because I believe it. I agree. God, I agree with you. And so we become passive. Instead of saying, I'm going to be active, I'm going to be deliberate about it. This is going to be my life course. I'm going to be a servant. Rick Warren, the author of The Pur Purpose Driven Life, said this. Lazy people, let it happen. Wise people, make it happen. May we be a wise people that we will say, I'm going to make this sincere love happen in me and through me for other people. And Paul, in chapter 12, he begins to dictate and define what this sincere love looks like. See this here on the screen. In chapter 12, verse 9, it says, love must be what? Oh, man, I'm sorry. I thought I was at neighborhood church. Love must be what? Sincere. All right, I got you with me. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. You can hate what is evil in the, in the things of people, and you, you can hate what is evil in our society. You can hate that, and as a matter of fact, it says, now cling to what is good. How many times do we get caught up hating what is evil and good? We just can't find that. Love looks for the good. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Never stop 
be committed. It is just, if, if I'm going to love and I'm choosing this, it says love one another, be devoted to one another. You are my one another. I'm devoted to the one another's in this room. Honor one another above yourselves. That nobody is more important than the person sitting in front of me. Man, this is hard. The person who disagrees with you, the person who you find wrongs in, that you would say, you don't have to earn me honoring you. But sincere love just says, I'm going to honor you anyway. Then it says this, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. We're going to come back to that. Be joyful in hope. Always be excited that things are going to get better and there is actually a good plan in God's eyes for all of us. Patient in affliction when you are afflicted by some fools in your life. And be faithful in prayer. How much do we talk about people, but we don't pray about people? Oh, okay, next, next line. Hold on, hold on. I didn't get that last part. It says, share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality, serving each other, and making sure other people's needs are taken care of. Next scripture. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Only say positive, good, fruitful things about other people. See, what should happen is, is when we're in areas that we're, things are out of control and we're having a hard time with people, this is when we should thrive. That I'm going to be a blesser, not a curser. This is when I step out of myself to where I want to curse, I, I want to cuss them, <laughs> cuss them out, right? I want to do that. They probably deserve it, but I'm going to be one who blesses, bless their home. Would you give them a promotion? Would you give them favor? Lord, the things that are hurting their life that they're doing, Lord, would you come in and give them grace and mercy? Lord, would you correct their wrongs? Would you bless their children? Would you, when you start doing that, it crucifies the curses that you may be holding in your heart. It says, mourn with those who mourn. Or, I'm sorry, rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. You know how, how terrible it is when we rejoice when those we don't like have hardships? Or they get what's coming? Man, you guys all wish you would have gone out to the lake today, right? Anyway. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Who determines if they're low position? Me. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. We don't do revenge. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, now this is for us. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. This is how, when we apply these into our life, we are becoming active in our love that eliminates woke love, and we are now being filled up with something that can change the world. The world starts with your neighbor. The world starts with that family member who is still your neighbor, who, who has done some wrongs. Your that is the world that we have. And it says this, that you can heap burning coals on their head. Now, some of you may read that and say, so you're saying if I do these things, they're going to be burned with the fire from hell. Lord, send the fire, right? Like we're going to get them in their shame. They're going to look stupid because I love them so much. That's not sincere love. That's not sincere love. We have these quotes. You've said this before, you know, and you preach it to your kids. Kill them with. Kill them, really? Kill them. Kill them, because that's love. I, I'm, I'm, not talk, I'm talking to the person you're sitting next to, okay? 
No, what it refers to is this. Is that back in these times, it was so important for you to keep your fire burning and keep your coals hot because that is what kept you warm. That is what cooked your food. Fire was essential. And you had to keep these, these coals hot. And what he's referring to is this, is that when your enemy, that bad person, the opposition, the one that offended you or whatever, runs out of burning coals, what they would have to do is they'd have to put this big jar container on their heads and go and collect hot coals from other people so they could go back and build their fire. He says this, don't let them go around and look. What I want you to do is take of your own and not just take a few coals. I want you to take these burning coals and dump them on them saying this, that you may have been cold to me. You may have not been nice to me, but I'm going to warm you with the love that I have. That I'm going to give of my own burning coals. You don't have to go search. I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to love you. See, when Christ came into this world, it wasn't to point out wrongs and be a condemner. It wasn't to point out how cold we were. He came to warm the world. He came to warm the world. And we have a great commission. We have a great opportunity in this world. Church, we can change the world if we stop looking at love the way the world does. And it doesn't matter how bad you are or how difficult you may be, I'm still going to see myself as a servant. I'm going to find the best in me, Jesus, to serve the best in you. Lori and I were... In Mexico not too long ago, and the, the worship team can come on up, Pastor Markel, if you can. And it was the first night that we were there in Cancun. We had a little vacation. And so we wanted to get into the city to go to Walmart. And so we, we got the bus there. It's nice and comfortable and air-conditioned. Not. And we get, we get there in town, and by the time we are, we're, we're finding out where it's at, and we're walking to Walmart, it's, it's dark out. And then we're getting there, and the, the, you know, they don't obey, like, signs and stuff. And so there was this crosswalk in the, in the darkness, and we're waiting there, and we're waiting for cars to be polite and stop and be careful for us. And then finally, I said, Lori, hold on. So I said, I'm going to stop the traffic. She's like, Dave, what are you doing? Don't do that. I'm like, girl, we're going to stop this. I'm going to Walmart. And so I, I decide to step out and there's, there's three lanes and I, I, there's one lane. And I just, I just stop and look at him. Like this is anointed man of God right here. No, I'm just kidding. But I stop him. And you hear, like, you know, not too hard, but you can hear it. And then I keep walking and I step in the next one. I'm like waving Lori down like I'm a crossing guard, right? And so I'm stopping this one. They're coming. It's dark. We see headlights. And then there, there's another one we stop. And the, the, the cars come and they're stopping really hard. And I'm like waving her down to get to the island before we start on the other side. It was like Frogger. And we get, a, we get across. Or right when we're getting across to the island. Oh, this is hilarious. We hear the car stop and then we hear this motorcycle screech and hit a car. It was hilarious. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm sick. I'm really sick. Okay. But it was just a little funny because you just hear it and Lori's like, what are you doing? You can't do that. I'm like, we got to stop traffic to get across. You don't understand. Church, we should have a love that stops traffic in our world. That stops traffic in your family, in your workplace, in your school, and wherever you are, that I'm going to have this type of love that this culture doesn't know about, but it's going to stop traffic because that's what Jesus did. And we're going to look at one scripture that the Apostle Paul just slams right in the middle of having this, this love, this sincere love. It says this, if we can pull it up, Romans 12, 11. And why don't you stand with me? Because I'm going to close right here. It says, never 
be lacking in zeal. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Never be lacking in passion, but keep your spiritual fervor. Fervor means to be intensely hot or fire. That the only way Because see, what happens is serving the Lord. See, when I'm serving other people, serving in the best in them, I'm serving the Lord. And the only way that I'm going to be served the Lord is to be able to keep myself hot with the Holy Spirit inside of me. And if you're making a decision to say, this old stuff, I'm not going to be like the world and the culture. I'm choosing to serve people because I'm serving the Lord. And my goal is to be white hot for him and the Holy Spirit moving in my life because that's the only way I cannot do it in myself and of myself and I'm going to have zeal I'm going to have passion I'm going to have commitment I'm going to be devoted I'm giving my all to it and God now would you fill me with your spirit I'm hungry I cannot do this I don't even want to do this I don't think but Lord I know it's your spirit living inside of me in you I live and in you I move and in you I have my being But it comes to us just saying, I'm going to make room for the spiritual fervor, the spiritual hotness. We have something the world doesn't have. We have the Holy Spirit power. And the only way this changes is for you to say, that's what I want. And that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to go into the song. I will make room for you. And we're not going to end this session this service with here are five things you're going to do when you leave we're going to end this with Holy Spirit come down in this place Holy Spirit come in and fill me you read what the scripture is and what love is and how you the sincere love or whatever but now Holy Spirit would you reign in this place would you lift up your hands this morning would you just lift them up and say Holy Spirit would you come right now would you begin to fill my mind Holy Spirit, talk to me. Would you transform me in the renewing of my mind today that I'm not conformed to the pattern of this world, but there's a new pattern alive in me. Holy Spirit, would you come today? We need you. We want you. We long for you, God. We're here to serve you and to give you glory and honor and praise and blessing, Lord. We do that today. Come on, church, and maybe some of you just come to the altar today. It's like, I got to do some business with God because I need to get deeper with Him today. Can we make room for Him right now? To do whatever you want. Yeah, come on, church, lift your voice right now. To do whatever you want. To. And I will make room. Oh, come on. To do whatever you want. To. Let's step it up and let you. Let's declare this over our life today. Let's get white hot today. Holy Spirit, fire right now. Fire right now. In us. 